Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the showdown between the Dwarves and the Warriors of Chaos. So it is going to be Grom Brindle facing off against the big old KFC man himself, Sartorial the Ever Chicken. We are coming in with our most degenerative dwarf builds. It is going to be the Anti-Chaos Dwarf Box. All right, it's not really a box. It's kind of just a very small formation. But basically what you do, you guys probably remember this from the uh, Chinese tournaments I was playing in, but you basically go with just two Iron Breakers. We have Norgun Link's Iron Breakers. And another unit of Iron Breakers, we do also have the Aura coming in from the Grumbling Guard. And anytime you are going to be in a relatively tight box, this is quite good. It does give a Vigor Aura of 9% to your entire army here. And the Dragonback Slayer is here in the back. Now you'll notice I do have three characters. We have the Thane, we have Felix, as well as Grom Brindle. The reason why we go so heavy metal into characters is because Sigvald. And if they bring Sigvald, he actually beats Grom Brindle in combat, which is really, really surprising. Uh, you know, I used to go in thinking, oh yeah, Grom Brindle can totally handle Sigvald. But then I had a couple tournament games where basically Grom Brindle just got trash canned by Sigvald and I lost the game. So in this case, I bring Grombi, I have a Thane, and Felix, all of which can kind of team up on Sigvald and really beat him down. And if they don't have Sigvald and they have other characters, those three units are still very durable. You have cross healing from Felix, and they can drag down, you know, elite units of infantry with the good armor piercing between Grom Brindle as well as Felix. Now, the real core of the build is going to be the gyrocopters. We have double brimstone, double steam cannons. Steam cannons are there to kill marauders and horsemen. The brimstone guns can snipe any number of targets, including horsemen, uh, cavalry, chariots, things like that. And the gyro bomber is there for sniping, but also more importantly for the actual bombing runs because they do incredible damage against the warriors of chaos. So against this formation like I have here, right, the chaos warriors are going to be very tightly packed around your box and you're able to get some really nasty bombing runs for sure. So for my opponent's build, the Great Onyage here, coming in with the Swords of Chaos, getting a little bit hog wild here. Obviously, these guys do have good armor piercing and they're relatively durable for sure. But um, yeah, very choice target here for my Brimstone Guns. He does also have a Hell Cannon kind of uh, caddied off here in the corner, a little bit susceptible to being focused down by cannons and whatnot. But Hell Cannons can be good against Dwarves if you can shut down or at least angle them in some way. So oftentimes on this map, you see a Hell Cannon put right here on this little choke point, and then it can shoot up and over, and cannons can't return fire. But aside from that, he's got a couple of horsemen, a bunch of uh, Chaos Marauders and Chaos Warriors with great weapons, and that is pretty much it, on top of two elite units via the Mirror Guard and the Demon Spew. So quite a bit of fun here. Uh, this is actually a good play by him, so basically I was sniping his Hell Cannon, but instead of shooting the Hell Cannon, now I'm basically stuck shooting the Chaos Dwarf crew, which is really not cost-effective for my Brimstone Guns. So what I do in response is I just switch the Brimstone Guns onto the Marauder Horsemen, Trying to mitigate the anti-large or anti-air tools he has, not anti-large, and bring those bad boys down. And so far, so good. They've taken some pretty heavy casualties. The Gyre Bomber using its really consistent armor-piercing damage to drag down these Swords of Chaos. They are down to uh, what appears to be 15 models of 18 right now. So we've certainly done quite well. Now, the one scary thing is you notice I had to switch my formation right away is because Big Bird has final transmutation. So if he comes in here and just nails my whole, whole army, though I'm ahead on the bounce power from the early gains of the Gyrocopters, I would probably lose the game. If he hit every single unit in my army in a tight box with the final transmutation, it'd be over. Um, you know, all my characters would be down to like half health. The uh, Norgamling's Ironbreakers, despite their 25% magic resist, would also be trash canned. So there'd be a lot of scary things for sure. So the, the dreaded Dawi box holds firm. And now the, uh, the Hell Cannon crew looking like it wants to get back on. So what I do is I actually leave one Gyrocopter back here just to deal with them. And those Chaos Dwarves are going to be paying for their uh, for their grudges here at the hands of this Gyrocopter. But the rest of my army just kind of chilling, obviously. The Gyrocopter is doing the work of the uh, of the old ones. They're not the old ones, but I guess the old Dwarven Gods, Grungni, Valaya, all that sort of good stuff. And we're just kind of forming up ranks to make sure I get those good engagements. Iron Breakers are keeping a very watchful eye here on these foul Nurgle Demon Spew that are trundling through the forest. Demon Spew are kind of cool. When I play against dwarves, I sometimes as Chaos like to mix in like one unit of uh, Demon Spew or Forsaken because if you can get them around the back of the Dwarven army, which is almost always defended by Slayers, they actually do really well against Slayers. Uh, Dragonback Slayers, yes, have good stats and hit hard, but they have zero armor and have low AP. So against a unit with 85 armor with high DPS, the Slayers do get massacred pretty badly. Now, Swords of Chaos move it in, trying to get what value they can before things get ugly. They go after Felix, the hero of the old world, and Felix kind of gets trampled a little bit, but you know, he's buying time. and. That entire time, these Swords of Chaos are getting peppered by some hot Dwarven lead. And you can see the bounce power ebbing even more and more into the favor here of the Dwarves as the Gyrocopters continue to wreak some serious havoc here on the forces of the Warriors of Chaos. And yes, the Chaos Dwarves in the back have been silenced once and for all. And Blasting Charge is now going down into the Mirror Guard. Sigvald's personal uh, pals here definitely getting some business, but we do also get some friendly fire here on the Marauders. And the uh, Demon Speed do charge into the back and also get on top of my Slayers, which is a little bit unfortunate, but considering I have Felix, I have a Thane, I have a bunch of characters here, the Dwarven heroes are going to be piling in and should be able to pick off the Demon Speed models. Also, we get some crossfire from the Blasting Charges, so I did turn them around and started throwing some massive charges. And look at the devastation on the Demon Spew! Absolute brutality! Those guys are forced back. The Dragonback Slayer is going to butter their bread pretty hard. But now uh, Onyage does get a very, very good final transmutation. So he nails the Norgamlings, he hits my Thane. I 
think he missed Grumber and nobody did also get the Dragonback Slayers, but yeah, for the most part, it does some good damage, but it wasn't our entire army. It didn't hit our Gyrocopters, and the units on the far side should be unaffected, so that did kind of temporarily pull back the Bounce of Power, but the Chaos Marauders, despite having good armor piercing and 34 melee attack, for their price point, not bad, but again, 79 melee defense and just incredible durability. The Iron Breakers are spanking them pretty badly, and now it's kind of time to line up those bombing runs. So here comes the first one, the Gyro Bomber flying over the for uh, Forces of Chaos, definitely getting a couple nice little drops right there, but really this is where the money's at. You can see a big just bunch of Chaos Warriors right here, so we will be waiting for them to get a little bit more densely packed, and we'll go from there. In the meantime, uh, Dragonback Slayers are running away, and the reason why I'm running away is because Mirror Guard will trade super efficiently, so I'm just trying to waste the time of the Mirror Guard while the rest of my army potentially uh, wins me the game here. Uh, Norgamling's Ironbreakers fighting that good fight, and here comes some hot payloads bombarding these foul heretics. Beautiful stuff going down here, and uh, there will be some more hot lead being dropped here on the Forces of Chaos here in just a moment. The Jar Bomber certainly has a lot of ammunition. I believe 11. Yeah, there's another one right there, buttering them up. A nice little bombardment right there, and yeah, they're quite lined up here. Definitely uh, a good position. So Felix as well as the Thane are fighting. A little bit damaged from the final transmutation from the Warriors of Chaos, but for the most part, uh, healthy and healing, right? Felix is going to be constantly healing himself as well as the Thane. And the White Dwarf is now going to be piling in. You really want to keep these characters together. And the overcasted final transmutation, I think, costs some, like, somewhere close to 30 wins of magic. It's insane. So I knew that, considering the length of the game, I had a little bit of time before another one potentially came in. Probably another couple minutes. Um, so I was like, okay, let's get our characters together. Let's get some healing on Felix and uh, do our business. Jar Bomber's going in once again. Going to be dropping a hot payload, I think. Yep, there's a nice one right there on the end of those Chaos Warriors. And the Gyro Bomber again flying outwards while the uh, Iron Breakers continue to hold them off. And yeah, the Iron Breakers should be able to win this fight, which they would normally struggle in due to the support of the Gyrocopters. Chaos Marauders are great weapons, are pretty much the last fighting Chaos Warriors. Everyone else is more or less routing. And of course, we have the big KFC chicken. I kind of felt like we're at a point in this game where even if I do get caught with a big nuke from the uh, final transmutation, it's not going to be the end of the world considering my characters have healed up and how little Chaos has left on the battlefield. Although the Mirror Guard, due to a lapse in micro on my part, do actually catch the Dragonback Slayers. And you can see uh, 69 models there for a moment on the Mirror Guard. Very nice stuff. Uh, but they should be able to make quick work of the Dragonback Slayers. And uh, that's, that's a bit of a, a disaster for me. I should have kept running. Although, who's faster? Uh, 25 speed, but they are afflicted by the power of the Dragonback. And I, I, yeah, we'll go ahead and check. I think Mirror Guard actually have the same speed as Slayers. So I think I should have been able to kind of get away here. But again, the Hero Squad, the White Dwarf, Felix, dropping some fat heals, able to cleave the hide there of the great, uh, the great Zinchian Chicken. And uh, yeah, Chicken's going to be pulling back at this point while I do kind of chase with my Goon Squad. And that's pretty much all Chaos really has outside of the Mirror Guard. Mirror Guard will be a little bit tricky to kind of get through, but considering I have the Iron Breakers, uh, I have the three characters which can easily chop through them, it shouldn't be too bad. And Brimstone Guns basically just going after the Warp Chicken while the Swords of Chaos make their way back in. So here comes the Armor Piercing uh, Warriors of Chaos. Yes, 111 value on these these mad Chaos Cavalry. In general, I feel like Chaos Knights, even especially the Elite variant, the Swords of Chaos are pretty terrible units. I really hope that in Game 3 they can give them, like, uh, like certain marks. So you could do, like, Chaos Knights with, like, even Chaos Undivided could, like, choose their mark and, like, actually give them some cool pertinent stats, like better armor piercing value or with, like, Horn or something or, like, in general, Ward Save based on Winds of Magic for Zinch, uh, a melee attack aura for uh, Nurgle, like, something like that because general Chaos Knights are just so terrible com uh, considered to their uh, variants in other factions, really. So, uh, Grombrindle moving in, going to be going after the Demon's View, and they were good in Game 1, right? Uh, Chaos Knights were actually pretty decent in Game 1. I remember using them quite a bit. So, Felix, as well as uh, the Thane, fighting the Big Chicken, and now we do have the Mirror Guard moving back in, and Grombrindle and the Iron Breakers are going to be trying to reposition while we use the last of our ammunition coming in from the Gyrocopters to try and finish off the Mirror Guard here, and it's going pretty well. The Thane coming in with the classic Dwarven Karate, of course, we've known that since Game 1, that Dwarves apparently know Karate as they do flying jump kicks as one of their primary attack animations, which you would think wouldn't be terribly effective. Granted, they do headbutts, they do all kinds of crazy stuff. And now the Mirror Guard have collided here with the forces of the Norgrimling's Iron Breakers. Grombrindle moving in as well, and it looks like there is finally going to be another nuke. So it will hit a lot of my army, but I do manage to get the Thane out of the range of effect. It does hit Gromby, but Gromby, he's too pissed off to care. Um, he's going to be moving in, trying to protect Felix, although Felix is certainly taking a bit of a beating here from this greater demon of Zeech. And Iron Breakers, again, being rallied on here by a bunch of Chaos Warriors. A little bit painful for sure. That's still a lot. 44 and uh, 34 here. But I do have a couple uh, bombardments left, so we're going to be flying over the head of these foul heretics here in a moment. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it was coming up. Yep, dropping some hot payloads there on them. And uh, then we drive in with the Gyrocopters to try and break their leadership. It gets pretty low at 25, but not enough to actually uh, break them and karate chop them. The Warp Chicken still fighting to the bitter end. Turned into an actual 8-minute game. You know, I thought in the beginning it would be over relatively quickly when we got the Hell Cannon and Swords of Chaos, but you can never underestimate the Warp Chicken. He is uh, he is a ferocious foe, especially when you're doing Haggard Dowie tactics like this. And 
creating them juicy, juicy. Uh, yeah, would I mean, I guess it was kind of a box, more of just a really, really small elite army. Um, yeah, it wasn't, a, wasn't a box per se. I don't even know what you would call that shape. But the last of the Chaos Warriors are breaking. Warp Chicken going to be trying to get uh, Felix here with one last blow, but there, uh, the Warp Chicken is going to be hunted down. And the Gyrocopters, you can watch her just Benny Hilling him. And he's trying his hardest to get Felix, but there, the Gyrocopters get a full surround. And then uh, Grumbrindle comes in for the uh, Steel Chair blow there at the very end. Well played to my opponent. It was a fun game. We talked about it after the fact. Um, for sure, in the Chaos Army, you just want to get more Horsemen and some Feral Mance cores just to make sure this doesn't happen. And I have a couple builds that have uh, done pretty well against this style of play. But yeah, this can be really good if like it's the first time you're playing someone, they don't know who you are, uh, they don't know your build in this matchup, you can really catch people off. But of course, if you do this super often, I've, I've done it you know a couple times in tournaments, I think people would come to expect it and they could just counter it pretty easily. But that's not to say that with this build, you couldn't even deal with your uh, counter. Man, 2,500 on that bomber is such a damn good unit sometimes. And uh, I remember they used to be one of the worst units on the roster. Then their miniguns got all sauced up and uh, yeah. Living the, living the good life. Felix up to 1100 too. But um, yeah, Warp Chicken 24, not bad. Yeah, the army definitely had some glaring holes in the anti-air game. As far as like dealing with ground forces, it certainly had some had some tools, right? The Hell Cannon should be hidden though, because if the dwarves do come with the cannon, they just pretty much snipe it and you get no value. But um, yeah, cutting the... Uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys right now. Well played to my opponent there. And um, now let's go ahead and jump on over. Custom battles. Custom battles indeed. So we will go to the Warriors of Chaos. I think I have a build saved for it. You can go ahead and just kind of load that bad boy up. A lot of my builds are very outdated. Um, Chaos vs. Dwarves. Yeah, something like this. So basically, you have a Deathcaster. Um, if they go elite, you can purple sun them in their little box. You can spirit leech them if they don't blob up. You have double manticores plus uh, four Marauder Horsemen to chase down the Gyrocopter forces. It looks like something was changed in terms of uh, cost. So you can even just get a Marauder, basically. And uh, you can cut this if you want. You can get like a single Forsaken unit to press up around the back. And then you could get that Marauder. So something like this would probably be fine. Uh, the basic Marauders, are just, it's just a price point thing because the Great Opens are a lot more expensive. And here you have plenty, like Chariots can deal with Infantry, Great Opens can. Uh, Manticores plus four Horsemen should shut down that amount of Gyrocopters pretty easily, especially considering you can Spirit Leech spam the Gyro Bomber and really keep it from getting value by chasing it with Manticores. Because that Dwarven build doesn't have any anti-air, and even if they go with traditional Dwarves, this build is still good. You have Width, you have Chariot, Sigvald's really powerful with the Deathcaster. You have the two Manticores to assist in sniping characters. It's just, uh, it's a strong build, so give it a try. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. We'll see you on the other side. Satisfied the grudge for today, but uh, we'll, there's, you know, the book remains full. So we'll be back with some dwarf games. And we'll see you guys on the other side. Take care.